The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Pro. Bernard Tobin here for the Soybean School, and I'm uh, out near Arthur, Ontario, joined today by Deb Campbell, Agronomy Advantage, agronomist. Thanks for taking the time. Hi, Bern. Thanks. Awesome. Hey, now, it's a, it's a bit cool out here today. I'm underdressed, and Dave, uh, Deb is dressed <laughs> properly. But, uh, hey, things are, a lot of farmers are out scratching. I see a, I'm passing sprayers, seeing a lot of cultivators out there. Some people are saying, hey, let's plant some soybeans. But question for you, how early is too early? Well, you know, we need to sort of throw the calendar away, look at the field conditions. Basically, these days, if we're able to plant corn, we can plant soybeans. Ground conditions are very similar for for both crops nowadays. Uh, we look at the research, early planting uh, demonstrates higher yielding beans time and time again. So that's solid data. And um, we just need to figure out how to plant corn and beans at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. everybody wants to plant early, obviously, mm -hmm. but. Let's talk about a few things that you should consider. First of all, soil temperature. Soil temperature, you know, it, it's part and parcel of the soil conditions, you know, as, as one big clump, I guess you'd say. Soil temperatures, um, you know, we want them fairly warm. Uh, we want to be planting into a warm forecast. Um, soil temperatures ideally above 12 degrees Celsius. And keep in mind that the soil temperatures are often warmer than the air in the spring if we're dealing with worked soil for sure. Um, you know, we want that soil warm, moist, friable and we want seed slot closed all those good conditions so um, but preferably planting into a warm forecast that's pretty critical forecast is great what about let's talk let's talk about variety and, and day length and the, the length of variety um, you know a lot, of, a lot of people are reaching for longer varieties what how does that play into Longer varieties certainly, you know, just just same same rules as apply in corn. You know, we go to the longer uh, full season varieties. Um, we tend to get rewarded for yield. Um, when we're planting early, we can usually step up 100 to 150 heat units in maturity, um, and still come in at a you know a mid mid October sort of harvest window quite easily. If you are planting wheat, if that is your intent in the fall, then I would say stay close to your normal maturity so that way you're harvesting in September still. Right. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about. Uh, um, weed control and you know obviously you've been seeing a lot of fields here that uh, the, the critters are coming already. Yeah that mild open fall that we had and uh, mild open winter for that matter um, the the winter annuals are aggressive in these fields in, in weed and in corn residue no-till. Uh, we need to have a strategy for early planting that is going to deal with that. We're in a world of glyphosate resistance now we need to have that in mind ahead of time so that those pre-emerges are part of the plan. So whether it's planning today or planning a month from today that needs to be part of our package right. let's talk about seeding rates obviously you know when you're pushing earlier and trying to get in the ground earlier what are you going to be thinking about with the seeding rates? seeding rates you know we tend to think that okay we're in less than ideal conditions or you know things could go backwards here we'll we'll up the seeding rate and really we don't necessarily need to do that even though we are planting early the preference would be we'd have fungicide treated seed and um, you know we keep that that seeding rate reasonably modest. Uh, you know, we want to end up with a final stand of about 120 to 140 thousand. So perhaps a little bit on the low side. But the goal of planting early is to increase the node count on our plants um, before we initiate flowering. And so we don't necessarily need more plants. We need healthy, viable plants. 140 thousand final stand. Um, and by the time we reach that June 21st window where day length changes, uh, the goal would be to have seven or eight nodes on those. Plants. Let's talk about, um, um, I guess, you know, residue planting in the corn, and let's talk about frost because last year we had a really, you know, early frost. Yeah. You know, that was a big scare. How should that factor in your thinking? Yeah, so, you know, there's certainly lots of fields destined to go in on the corn residue again this year. Um, I think, you know, last year was sort of one of those one in 20 year events where circumstances came together with heavy corn residue, uh, uh, you know, early planted soybeans, and then that frost on top of things. Um, you know, we certainly want to be uh, working with the corn residue to the degree that we can. Um, I like to see a planter unit, a row unit planter, putting these beans in on corn residue 
residue. It handles the residue much better, uniform seating depth, um, uniform placement, and it lets us fine tune those seating rates a little bit more. And uh, if the frost comes, it comes. You know, we can't really plan around the frost. Exactly. Hey, final thing I want to talk about is, you know, disease pressure and, you know, what we can think about um, when it comes to things like uh, white mold, when it comes to even when you're starting a planet. Yeah, so white mold to me, you know, that's got to be one of those factors that's in the back of our mind the day that we're planting, and that comes into line with the seeding rates. So um, having that final stand of 140,000, we're looking to have those seven, eight, you know, even 10 nodes by the end of June as we're initiating flowering. So we want to make sure that we've got that strategy in mind that allows us to perhaps treat for white mold on a thicker, denser canopy earlier. So it certainly is a factor. We want to be watching for that. That can be the downside of early planting, but we have ways to manage that, so. Well, so Deb, hey, great tips then. Thank you so much. And I guess the bottom line always is plant when it's fit, and if it's not mm -hmm. fit, Go fishing. Go fishing. There you go. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you out in the fields and here, there, and everywhere. Great. Thanks, Vern. Awesome.